We kick off this story with Peter Parker in full friendly neighborhood Spidey mode. Uncle Ben is dead already, thank god, and young Parker is already a full-fledged superhero. Spidey helps Yuri Watanabe and the NYPD take down Wilson Fisk, aka the Kingpin, and his army of rocket launching thugs. More rockets? A little excessive, don't you think? What? Is it National Rocket Day or something? After the arrest, Peter investigates a possible break-in at an auction house holding Kingpin's art collection. He confronts a gang of masked gunmen who call themselves the Inner Demons. They are searching for a file in Wilson Fisk's belongings. Peter's reporter ex-girlfriend Mary Jane Watson is also there investigating and saves Peter before she finds the file herself. She discovers a secret project named Devil's Breath in the file before the gunmen steal it and escape from Spider-Man's grasp. Peter and Mary Jane put their differences aside and decide to work together to figure out who the inner demons are and what they want to accomplish. Peter consults with Martin Lee about the origins of one of the masks he took from the gunmen and Lee ominously warns him not to investigate any further. It could be connected to dangerous people. Mary Jane might want to find a different story. Later, Peter returns to work and he and Dr. Octavius are constructing artificial limbs to help disabled patients. Just as they begin a major breakthrough in the research, Mayor Norman Osborn shuts down the project, takes Octavius' grant money, and steals all of his research. Yeah, that's right, Norman Osborn is the mayor. Mr. Osborn. Oh, please, how long have we known each other? It's Mr. Mayor. Meanwhile, the inner demons continue to attack Kingpin's properties and holdings. Spidey, with the help of Officer Jefferson Davis, successfully foils several of their plots. Osborne holds a re-election rally and invites Officer Davis as one of his guests. The rally is attacked by the inner demons with Martin Lee leading the assault in his alternate form, Mr. Negative. Suicide bombers cause mayhem, leaving Peter unconscious from one of the blasts. Get down! Officer Davis' son, Miles Morales, narrowly escapes and survives the attack but finds Davis dead from the onslaught. Peter tries to console Miles and quickly befriends him once Miles starts volunteering at Feast. Osborne hires the mercenary, Silver Sable, and her squad to take down the demons. She distrusts Spider-Man and they constantly get in each other's way. Spider-Man continues his pursuit of Lee as he discovers Mr. Negative's anger towards Osborne and that he wants to steal the Devil's Breath. Peter finds out that the Devil's Breath is a bioweapon accidentally created by Oscorp as they search for a universal cure to disease. Lee successfully steals the bioweapon and tends to release it on Grand Central Station. Spidey and Mary Jane stop his plot and Peter kicks his ass in the subway. After a billion dollars of destruction, Spider-Man finally got his man. Mr. Negative was locked up, Joker style, and taken away to a higher security prison called Arkham. I mean, um, it's, uh, it's called The Raft. The story seems like it's over except for the fact that Dr. Octavius is still pissed and thirsty for revenge on Osborne. He goes from making artificial limbs to creating long tentacle-like arms that kind of look like, you guessed it, an octopus. He begins using them with an untested neural transplant. Peter worries that it's changing Dr. Octavius and affecting his sanity. Octavius loses it and attacks both the Raft and Rikers Island, releasing all the prisoners Bane style. We give it back to you. The people. He joins forces with Mr. Negative, Rhino, Electro, Vulture, and Scorpion to form the Sinister Six. They steal the Devil's Breath and release it in Times Square, infecting hundreds of thousands of New Yorkers with the disease, including Peter's sweet Aunt May. While Spidey fights and apprehends his villains one by one, Mary Jane breaks into Osborne's penthouse to try and find a cure. She discovers that Harry Osborne, Norman's son, and Peter's best friend was terminally ill and that the Devil's Breath was created as an attempt to cure his disease. She finds out that Martin Lee was one of the first test subjects, which subsequently granted him his powers but also caused him to accidentally kill his parents, and thus the root of his bloodthirsty vengeance. She finds the location of the cure and tells Peter where he can find it. Spidey locates the lab, confronts Mr. Negative, and defeats him, but Doc Ock shows up last a minute, takes Osborne and the cure, and leaves Peter gravely wounded. While Peter recovers, Miles gets bitten by one of Norman's lab spiders that hitched a ride on MJ. Without any other options, Peter constructs a new armored suit and confronts Octavius at Oscorp Tower. After a desperate struggle, he defeats him and saves both Osborne and the Cure. But with only a small amount of the Cure retrieved, Peter is faced with the difficult decision of saving his beloved terminally ill Aunt May or letting scientists study the Ancy Serum so that they can mass produce it and save the rest of New York City. 
Aunt May tells him that she has known that he's been Spider-Man and that she's proud of him. Peter, devastated, decides to save the city and cries at May's bedside as she drifts into the beyond. Three months later, New York is finding its way back to normalcy as Peter and Mary Jane have lunch together and reignite their romance. Miles reveals to Peter that he has gained spider-like powers after being bit by the escaped spider. Peter, in turn, reveals that he is Spider-Man, as we potentially get the sickest dynamic duo ever. In the post credit scene, we see Harry is being kept alive in a holding tank until a cure can be found. Norman touches the glass and we see a symbiote-like substance reach back. Venom, anyone?